Hello and welcome to this very special episode of the Peter Greenwood Show because this is a live on the Peter Greenwood Show and sitting with me is one of my friends of the show, Lisa Kowalski. Hi Lisa. Hello. It's been a long time since I've seen you. Uh, it's been quite a while. <laughs> How have you been? Yeah, good. It's the usual. How about you? I am okay. It was two shows ago last time I saw you. Two shows ago. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know. <laughs> so, let's go back to the beginning because I know you, but not everybody does. So, let's go back. You were born when you were about nine months old, I'm going to say. I guess. Let's go back that far. Okay. <laughs> so, let's talk about your musical origins. Okay. Tell me when you first started picking up a guitar and playing it. And so um, I caught my first guitar when I was 11 or 12, I'm going to say. I got it for Christmas. And um, I was always really interested in music. Like, I'd, I'd be singing around the house and being told to shut up by my dad all the time. Um, I went to piano lessons when I was younger. I tried to do violin lessons and then discovered I can't. Um, and then, so I got my guitar and then I couldn't figure out how to play it. Like, I just couldn't. I couldn't do it. And I, I, I think I gave up a bit easily. Um and then I was in music class and I kind of picked up a guitar again and somehow even those guitars are way worse than the one I had at home I managed to pick it up (laughs) Um, yeah because they're sticky and covered in fingerprints and they're big not great and half of them are are out of tune but I learned um and after that I just I kind of kept teaching myself and kept um getting better guitar I guess and then that's kind of where it started because that's when I started going out and doing music and I got an amp and started busking and stuff like that and so yeah that's that's it pretty much (laughs) okay thanks for listening today we'll be back next week hi bye (laughs) (laughs) so when you started being like yes I can do this what was that feeling like was it kind of a relief or a this is how I express myself and what made you keep going it was definitely hard to keep going because from the very first moment I wanted to do music, I had my dad being like, it's just a hobby. You need to do science. You need to be smart. And I'm like, well, I'm not. <laughs> um, Were you any good at science, though? No. Uh, there was a lot of pressure on me when I was younger to kind of be the smart one. And no one meant to put that pressure on me, but my sister, um, she's older than me. She's 22, I think. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know um, about you. But I'm feeling 22. Um, but yeah, she she's really smart. Like she got straight A's in school and stuff like that. Like she had has like the perfect kind of record, I guess. I don't know. Um, and she wants to be a doctor and stuff. She's got a biology degree, and so I saw that and always wanted to be smart. And then my brother is doing PE at university, so he's kind of doing well and stuff. And then there's just me that wanted to do music, which is quite a hard thing to pursue so I was always being told like oh it's just a hobby I never get anywhere so I was kind of holding myself back quite a lot but when I actually went for it it felt so like free like it felt like this is finally what I wanted to do because I tried not to do it just because I'd been told not to like when I went to school I tried to do two two sciences and literally my science teacher was like no you're not doing that like my parents were like nah (laughs) yeah um so I did music instead and stuff and so when I finally was like you know what screw it I'm gonna do this I love this I'm not the kind of person that can just sit there and study for like five hours straight and r- remember all the different cells and stuff like that like um so I just went for music and I know that's what I want to do because it's the only thing that's felt right out of everything that I've tried so that was probably a longer answer than you expected no, that's absolutely perfect <laughs> so you started playing music when did you first write your first song and do you remember it I probably don't remember all the words, but I'd probably remember a fair amount of them. I wrote it when I was 13. Um, It it was only like a few months or so after I first started learning guitar. Um, And it's it's a very cheesy song. I don't like it anymore. Um, (laughs) When I first wrote it, I liked it though. Um, But um, it was kind of about wanting to be a singer and be on stage and stuff like that. So I wrote that and sang it at a couple shows and stuff. And then I kept writing from there. So, yeah. What's the songwriting process like for you? Because I've, I've said it before and I will say it again a thousand and one times. If you put a gun to my head and said, write me a song, play me a song, you would have to pull the trigger because I just can't do it. So I am in eternal envy of anybody who can. So what is the songwriting process like for you? 
Um, it changes with every time. Sometimes it's kind of hard for me to write a song. Like um, when I first started writing songs, it wasn't that bad. But recently, it's kind of I've had been in a bit of a writer's block recently. Actually, I don't know why. Um, but on the whole, it's it does change with every song I write. Like sometimes I'll just play around with guitar chords and be like, "Oh, I like this. I want to try this out." Sometimes I'll um, I get a lot of like lyric ideas that just come to me at random points, and I'll like write them down. Um, so yeah I, I just kind of get inspiration from like everything and then when I'm in work and shouldn't be on my phone I'll write down on my phone a lyric that I thought of or something like that you know so yeah Speaking of your songs we're going to hear one of my favourite Lisa Kowalski songs this is a song from your EP it's called Free Spirits yeah. and it's also the title track of the it EP is. tell us a little bit about the writing of this song Um, It kind of came about I, I wrote it when I was in high school I think I was 15 or something um, and someone had called me free spirited and I would say that is true because throughout my high school life I kind of was just myself and I, I, I lost a lot of friends from being myself like I'm just being honest here um, I struggled a lot to find a friend group and I, I went through so many and it just kind of felt like what am I doing wrong and stuff but I just didn't find that group that I fit in with it wasn't my fault it wasn't anyone else's fault you know I was just a different person I wanted to do different things with my life and stuff um so I didn't want to pretend to be someone else just to be popular or have friends or whatever um so I kind of just wrote it about that being different and like being yourself and not caring so yeah I, I, I kind of needed to write it it was it kind of helped me show myself like it's okay to be like this and it's there's no problem with it so kind of about finding your niche in the world niche niche i don't know how to say it. i always call it niche i always call it niche it is niche I, i've never heard anyone call it niche but that is quite quite a fun sounding word it is isn't it it's yeah. kind of cockney rhyming slang look at this niche over there <laughs> I like that. this is lisa kowalski and free spirits <laughs> We're all just aspiring hippies drinking coffee surrounded by good sanitaries. Got thousands in the hands, one man buys, nowhere to go and no plans. Watching plays, pretending someday we can pretend that we're okay. And just disappeared and we would hear and can't call it childhood fears. And we may not find a life for years. But that doesn't mean we can't be happy. Take a pride, honey. You can join us for the ride. Either way, you will watch me rise. Rise. We're all just dancing our best. Fed is in our head. So many stories to share. Just kind of peculiar, but not all familiar with the blood of life will throw at us. And we may not find a life for years, but that doesn't mean we can't be happy today. We made these smiles on us. We won't hear you whispering Cause we are the free spirits Yeah, we may be different But we are the free spirits We won't hear you whispering Cause we are the free spirits And we may not find a life For years But that doesn't mean we can't be happy Smiles on our own 
Cause we may be different, but we are the free spirits. We won't hear you whisper. Cause we are the free spirits. Yeah, we may be different. We are the free spirits. We won't hear you whisper. Cause we are the free spirits. This is live on the Peter Greenwood Show. This is my friend, my guest, Lisa Kowalski. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I don't know why every time you like introduce me or tell them who I am, I'm like, what's up? I just don't know what to do. You be you. It's like when people say happy birthday to you and you just kind of sit there not knowing what to do. So you just do some really awkward things to kind of make up for it and it just makes it more awkward. I, I can't stand it. I know. Like every year, everyone. I know the intention is good, yeah. but every year it's just like, please just leave me alone. Do not do this. Like, bring me cake. Bring me all the cake. Exactly. But just don't, don't sing to me. Every part of your birthday is great until they start saying happy birthday. You know, like write write a message or something like that. That's fine. But when they start saying happy birthday, it's just it's just the worst. And what I find about it is when people are singing happy birthday to you, like it's you think you're so important like oh mm. god i feel important but then if you're in a restaurant and other people start singing happy birthday at somebody else's birthday it's like oh shut the fuck yeah, up yeah that's very true yeah so we were discussing your musical journey we were indeed and we played free well we i didn't do anything <laughs> <laughs> you played free spirits for us let's talk about the ep okay and i also want to talk about a musical inspiration of yours we referenced earlier taylor where did she come to the party? Tell us about your first... Do you remember the first Taylor song you heard and what you thought when you first heard it? The first Taylor Swift song I heard, which I think is the same for a lot of people, um, was Love Story. I um, can't remember what age it would have been. It would have been... Nine? Nine or ten? Probably, because you're just about to turn 19? I don't know, something like that. I'm trying like to that. think of when that song came out, but yeah, it would have been yeah, about maybe. I was, I was pretty young. Yeah. Um, and I just kind of fell in love with like the way she wrote and the way she sang, just everything. She's like, uh, she was perfect to me. Like She was what I wanted to be, you know, she was pretty. She wrote amazing songs. She was a good singer and stuff like that. And that's just kind of what I wanted to be. So when I saw that and heard the lyrics she wrote, I just fell in love with it. And I was like, this is what I want to do, you know. It, she just writes such amazing songs and that, um, that's really what I want to strive for. So. Because back then as well, she was full on country, like a yeah. full on country artist before she made the switch to pop and whatever it is she's doing now. Yeah. Uh, and is that the direction you wanted to go musically? Because you, I would say you're kind of indie, kind of folkish yeah. a little bit, maybe popish. It's kind of strange. Like most people that do music these days, I feel like they kind of have a direction or an idea of where they want to go and I just have no idea <laughs> like I just kind of write songs as they come to me and then I'm just like I, d I don't think about the genre and because uh, I listen to so many different kinds of music that I can never just pick one you know I love so many different kinds of music that kind of just let what comes to me come to me and write and all that and it just turns out how it does don't know it probably would benefit me if i chose the direction because um i could promote to that one specific audience but i just like to write what i like to write so and i would argue maybe you'll know different because you're on the inside of it but i would argue that in the music industry nowadays with how music is accessed you don't necessarily have to stick mm -hmm. to one genre because there's always something there for everybody it's yeah. more accessible nowadays yeah. I, I get what you mean when you say that like um it's so easy to find a specific genre because when you go on Spotify, there will be like 50 playlists for one genre, you know. Um, so in this day and age, it probably is easier. But yeah, I just, I, I guess I, I get called a lot of different genres like pop, folk, country, acoustic. Um, but really, I, I, I don't care what my genres. I just want to make music that I like and I write what I like. So ends up how it ends up. <laughs> what do you think is your favourite song you've written on the EP? On the EP, um, probably looking but not finding. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, yeah, I wrote that when I was like, and well, not in love with someone, but I liked someone, <laughs> and um, they didn't like me back, and it was. Um, I feel like, yeah, I, I just really like the song. I think um, it kind of reminds me of a time that I was at and stuff like that because it was when I was in high school and I remember playing it for all my friends and stuff like that um so it kind of has memories attached to it but I also love Hearts of Gold because the music video was so much fun 
like when I think of the song I think of the music video and then I'm just like that was such a good day like I just remember when I got home that night I'm like I'm so happy because I got to dance with the lion and all these random people but it was fun <laughs> and a panda yeah and a panda can't forget that yeah the paisley panda Woo-hoo. let's talk a little bit about hearts of gold because <laughs> it, I believe it was your first music video uh, yeah it was yeah first. and you said it was fun but how did the idea come about um i got a grant from paisley 2021 and um there's a i don't know if you know them but there's a, like a um company kind of organization called create paisley mm. they do a lot of music related stuff in paisley just um yeah and then um, I, I i contacted alan from create and um who i've worked with a lot of times he's an amazing person he's really helped me with like music stuff and just everything really um he's just a, a great person so i um, contacted him and he had a friend that did um music videos he'd worked with like the la fontaines and stuff like that and um, so and he, we kind of just had a meeting and wrote down all his ideas and stuff like that and then once we had some ideas laid out we put on Facebook like if anyone wants to be in a musical video in the Paisley area feel free tons of people came turned up and we just kind of had it like it was pretty easy going like we had the ideas but we still just kind of like it was still casual like we just did what we felt like and stuff and it, it was just really fun it was really good and it shows up in the video because you're just dancing away having yeah. a great time walking down the street and it really shows in the music video and the song Hearts of Gold is kind of a love letter to paisley which is where you're from yeah so let's talk about that a little bit what was it like growing up in paisley um that's this is it's weird because this is only a question i've been getting asked like within the past four years since i started doing music like i never got asked that so i kind of only remember the past like five or six years um but doing the doing music in paisley is incredible i don't think there's a more supportive place you could do it like the people are just incredible there's when I, from when i started busking and people were coming up to me and buying me coffees when it was cold or be like oh do you want me to look after yourself while you do this or whatever and just the support there is so incredible you know it's 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 just amazing like all all the musicians really lift each other up and in glasgow no offense glasgow i love glasgow so, but when you're busking there can be lots of competition people being like oh i'm singing here so you can't sing there because it's too close and we're too loud blah, blah blah but in paisley it's always not like that like we always help each other out and that's just that's kind of what i think musicians do because we're all here to do the same thing we all want to sing I just want to have a good time, you know. Um, so why fight each other over it, you know? Uh, we are going to play. and I, I say, keep on saying we. I should. I, I keep on threatening to do this, bring a cowbell and just tap along behind We're, we're going to have to re-record it just so there's both of us in it now because you keep saying oh, we. We could do that. <laughs> uh, you're going to play a song for us. It is called... Come on, let's go. This is Come on, let's go by Lisa Kowalski. People say love is a cruel game We don't have to listen to them Cause I feel like I'm ready to play Even if I lose a bet And they may not understand it Know what I plans it But I know what we have is magic I go inside of being impatient And can't be bothered waiting No one else will have to know Come on, babe, let's go
Welcome back to Live on the P to Greenwood show. My guest is Lisa Kowalski. Do a thing. Do a thing. That's me. I don't know. <laughs> See, now I said do a thing. You didn't know what to do, uh, did Yeah, you? that's true. That's true. I didn't even think about that. It's like when someone says, tell me a joke. Uh, knock, knock. Who's that? I'm trying to think of a joke now. All the ones I know are like rude. I don't know if there's children watching your show right now. Go for it. <laughs> tell us a joke. What did the ocean say to the t- to the beach? I don't know. Nothing. It just waved. How is that rude? No, I decided not to do a rude one. I decided to be good today. <laughs> anyway. I've th- got quite a rude joke. Okay, go for it. Are you sure? Yeah. Even with your boyfriend watching? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, it's not particularly rude. Okay. <laughs> right. There were two old ladies sitting on a park bench when a flasher comes up. Opens his jacket. Okay. Does the whole thing. One old lady has a stroke. The other can't quite reach. <laughs> it's a good one. I like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. I've heard about dying on stage. Well, uh, did we already int- do the introduction? Yes. Yes. So we just waffled on. So yep. I should probably do it again, shouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Live on the Peter Greenwood Show. My guest is Lisa Kowalski. Hello. Let's talk about upcoming projects and mm-hmm. when they might be because you're taking a little bit of a break i am indeed <laughs> i know and i'm not gonna say tell us why but yeah. are you okay <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough question um i don't know but i'm trying to get there i guess i mean there's there's ups and downs you know like every day is an up and down for sure i mean uh, uh, two or three weeks ago i was like feeling really bad like one of the worst i felt i didn't even have a reason you know that's the thing about things like depression sometimes you're just depressed and it's like you have all these things around you that you can be happy for and you just don't know why you're like feeling like this um but now i'm not like super happy but i'm fine you know so it's it's just kind of strange i'm just trying to get through everything and make it to the point where i'm happy you know so See, you yeah. say that uh, in the beginning of December, they changed my medication mm. onto much stronger medication. And I am still trying to wrap my head around it. Like mm. over Christmas, I generally don't like Christmas, but over Christmas, I was just so bad. Mm. So we'll, we'll get there. Yeah. We'll get there. <laughs> uh, but there is talk. We've been talking about it for years. Mm of future music when you come back from your break yeah are you writing currently um yeah I, i'm writing currently um i don't write and with like an ep in mind i just kind of write when i want to like if i have a feeling or a thought that i'm like i could turn a song into the like out of this and then i'll just do it um so yeah i'm just continuing to write and when i feel like it's the right time i'll record the ep um because obviously i want to do music all the time like if i think now would be the right time to record an ep i'd do it within a heartbeat but within the music industry don't get me wrong i love it like music's what i want to do but there's just a lot of competition and like you compare yourself to others a lot because you like you see people they're doing better than you're like oh well what's wrong with me why can't that be me and it's obviously what do they have that i don't yeah like it's obviously not necessarily that sometimes it's luck sometimes it's just like their audience and stuff like that like um or maybe people just don't like me and like that's like that's their opinions i can't change that you know um but there's just a lot of times where you compare yourself to others you think you're not good enough and stuff like that so um it can be challenging when you struggle with mental health issues and stuff so um and i've kind of there's been times where i've felt really anxious before a gig and i know like a gig's a safe place like nothing is really gonna happen but i would just break down right before i'd be like i can't do this i don't want to do this and is it just gets tough so um i feel like it's a good time to kind of take a break and work on myself before i try and release part of myself to other people you know so i wonder what that process is like for a songwriter because i do this show week after week and you're putting yourself out there like people say oh it's just a radio show but when you're really doing it you're really putting yourself out there and you take the criticism because it's you have no choice Mm -hmm. is it like that in the music industry 
Yeah, you definitely do need to have a thick skin to be in the music industry. Like, that's no lie at all. I, um, and I'm not even, like, in the big music industry. Like, I'm just, like, I'm known, but only in, like, Paisley, Glasgow kind of area. Um, you may just lock all ahead, let's not be modest. Well, that's true. <laughs> um, and even then, it still feels like I'm not, strong enough for this and I, I would say at the start I was at the start like I was ready to do it I was happy I was like like I'd finally figured out what I wanted to do and I felt confident and stuff but over the years you know things happen and you 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 know you just can't help it and um so I just feel like it's time for me to take a break until I feel like I'm at the point where I was when I first started so yeah but before the break you released a new single yes it was called I do it was tell me a little bit about that because i've heard you play that song a dozen one times and i'm i'm not not afraid to admit manly tears did flow um yeah it's probably one of my saddest songs um when i first started singing it i could not cry either (laughs) you know it was was quite hard for me singing um at the start but i've gotten used to it now um but i wrote that um two years ago or something like that um i'd just gotten broken up with for like the first time in my first relationship and um it was just a very hard time for me you know i've like i said i've struggled a lot with making friends so i'm quite a lonely person um and um so yeah i just felt really kind of vulnerable and um just wanted to write a song about it because that's the only thing i really know how to do and i'm sad so yeah i just wrote that and um released it this or well not this year a few months ago <laughs> so yeah um and then we filmed a little music video for it um in a studio in there and um yeah it's, it's a lot more of a simple video than hearts of gold there's less people running about just dancing but yeah i still really like it so although imagine you took the hearts of gold concept into the i do video just people running around that'd be mixed messages in the I'm video just, i think i'm just playing at the piano all by myself and then during the second verse the lion comes in and does a dance I miss the lion. Me too. Lion, yeah. if you're out there, I love you. Come back and see us, lion. I will never forget you. She isn't lion. Hey. <laughs> so I can't thank you enough. It's been fantastic seeing you again because yes. we've been friends for a couple of years now. You were on the old show a bunch of times and we've caught up since then, but yeah. not on this show. And I, you were one of the first people I wanted to get on this new show. It turns out mm. you weren't. We are over a year into this <laughs> new show, but you know... We're here now. Yay, that's what counts. Yes. So I can't thank you enough for your time today. Thank you. It means a lot to me. And you're going to play us out with I Do. I am. This is Lisa Kowalski and I Do. (laughs) Thank you. still care about me But you forget to care about my feelings You drag me through the mud And you make me believe that I'm loved It's easy for you to say You wish things hadn't gone this way Everything has happened is on you And I'm the one gonna treat it like I fool So if you're gonna say you love me again You better mean it If you're gonna hold me eyes again You better not be leaving If you're gonna put your lips on mine You better be feeling the same way that I do I 
that I mean it If you're gonna hold me once again You better not be leaving If you're gonna put your lips on mine You better be feeling